Hey folks, here's one of the projects I've been working on this week. I got two new pots for my office and I'm going to go ahead and get those set up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to propagate two existing plants, one of them through division, one of them through cuttings. So I've got a snake plant that I want to divide and I will put that here in the smaller pot. And then I've got an angel wing begonia that I'm going to take some cuttings from and we're going to put that in this larger pot here. Uh, so taking the pots outside, we're going to get to work. A lot of these resin pots don't have holes in them. So the first thing I do here is drill some drain holes uh, just so they exist at the bottom of these. Even though they're going to be indoors, I still want to be able to make sure that they drain. And I'm using a, a quarter inch drill bit and putting a few holes in each of these. Now to get the dirt ready, I'm taking some dirt out of a flower bed in my front yard that has too much dirt in it. I've started working on this flower bed last year and uh, removing most of what was in there because I didn't want to keep any of it. So this is an opportunity for me to reduce some of that dirt. And again, I don't have to go and buy more dirt to put in these pots. I'm just taking from what exists in the front yard. Additionally, I get all these dry needles from a cedar tree in the yard that drop down. And so I'm getting some of these needles and I'm going to add those to my mix as well. So now I've reduced my yard waste. And again, I've had to buy less stuff because I'm able to, to mix this in. Now, in addition to that, what I do buy is a bag of manure, less than two bucks at my local hardware store. And I can mix that in to make sure the dirt has some really good uh, nutrients in it. Now, keep in mind, if you're doing this, that you want to make sure that you get the acidity right of the soil for the plants that you're putting in. So a lot of plants like very particular pH of the soil, and you need to make sure you're not just grabbing random things that are going to create soil that is inhospitable for the plants that you're trying to grow. In this case, what I'm putting in here is going to make the soil a little bit more acidic, which is fine for both the snake plant and the angel wing begonia. And so at this point, I'm going to start mixing in layers of soil and perlite into the pots. I like to use perlite because these are pots and I do move them around from time to time. Using the perlite is going to create good aeration for the roots. It's going to give you good water drainage uh, and it also makes the pots a lot lighter. Okay, so anytime I'm working with pots, I'm using a, a fair amount of perlite to improve root health and make the pots lighter so they're a little bit easier to move around. So I'm just putting in different layers and once I get those layers in the pot, I'm stirring that up and mixing that around. And be careful because if you use the aluminum cans, you might have some sharp edges down there. And if you're mixing by hand close to the aluminum, you want to make sure don't, don't cut your fingers. And as you're adding soil to the pots, you want to think about what it is you're going to put inside these. Okay, so don't just automatically fill the pot up. In the case of the snake plant, because I've got existing plants that have existing root structures, I'm going to put less dirt in the pot because I know that I want those root structures to be down a ways and I don't want to have to dig out a bunch of dirt later. In the case of the begonia, because I'm going to use cuttings, there's not any roots that are going into the pot. I'm going to go ahead and fill this pot to the top and where I want the top of the soil to be once everything's in place. Now, starting with the snake plant first, I'm just trying to be a uh, tough, gentle, <laughs> it's a little bit of a, a contradictory approach, but you've got to use some level of force to get this out. But also you want to be very careful and you can't just pull randomly. You can't just uh, attack the pot randomly you you want to make sure you're you're being gentle and trying to save any roots that you can and not rip the plant in half or do anything damaging but i'm using just a combination of gentle digging shaking and sliding to try and get this snake plant out 
So with this one, again, I'm going to divide it into two halves or roughly two halves. And so I'm looking at what I'm getting out of the existing plant and how the different leaves are connected and how I might group them together in roughly half and half. So once I have them out, I'm just sticking the first half in the gray pot and I'm adding dirt around the roots to go ahead and get these to a point where they are going to be able to survive and stand on their own. Now, because some of these are pretty tall and thin, they're having a little bit of trouble just standing up on their own. So I'm going to go ahead and get a stake and put it in the middle here to provide some additional support for the plants. As a side note, this is one of the reasons that I love growing bamboo in my yard is I have an unlimited amount of stakes whenever I need it. Not really unlimited, but I have way more than I actually ever need. And so I just go over to my bamboo that I need to trim anyway, and I just whack off a piece. And there you have it. I've got another thing I didn't have to buy, a, a support stake, just that I'm able to take out of my yard, put that support stake in and tie up some string to support this plant. Once the gray pot is done, I go back to the original white pot. I put the remaining half of the plant into that pot, put in the soil. This one is also a little bit flimsy because of the height and because it's new in dirt again, but I know I'm gonna put it in a spot where I can lean it so that it gets some support from the fireplace that I put this on. Uh, so I'm not going to stake or tie this one. I'm just going to leave it as it is and it'll get the support from leaning in its final home. So now shifting attention over to the begonia. When I did the snake plant, I actually stole some dirt out of the larger pot. So uh, I first need to fix that and get it back to where it's all ready to go. And as I mentioned before, I'm just using cuttings from one of my existing begonias and I want the dirt inside the pot to be at the level that I want it when everything is growing. And I don't need to consider any kind of space for roots or, or root balls, anything like that. Next, I'm gonna grab some cuttings off the begonia. Uh, you wanna take note of these nodes, any of the vines of the begonia will have these nodes on it. And it's important that each cutting that you're gonna plant has at least one node. It can have more than one node, although that doesn't really do anything for you, but it has to have at least one or it's not gonna grow. So for me in this project, I'm cutting off about a two foot section because I wanna be able to get out about six nodes. Uh, so I cut off two feet of one of the end of the vines. And from there, I'm going to cut that two foot section up into six pieces. And with the pot in place, now I'm just taking those pieces and I'm putting them in the dirt. A lot of people, when they're doing propagation from cuttings, use root hormones. I can tell you that I've done a dozen or so from this angel wing begonia. I've never used root cuttings and every single one of them has done just fine. I've had none of these fail ever. Lots of friends and family with begonias that came from this batch and I've never had to use it with the begonias. So I don't ever use it with the begonias. I just stick it straight in the dirt. And that's it. Our new office plants are in place. I'm especially excited for this begonia to start growing. It's going to take a few weeks before uh, any growth is visible and, and probably a couple of months before we have real plants, but I will be sure to update as things go on. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I will be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching and happy growing.